So first we would uh, find out what the depth of the um, section is from the top of the fibers down to the centroid of the steel. So here's our steel here and the centroid is is the average uh, of, of all the areas, Y bar areas t over the areas. And that's uh, really uh, going to be uh, midway between these centers here, center of, of this top layer and bottom layer of steel. And the uh, steel incidentally is 25 M, 625 M. 125 M bar is 500 millimeters squared. 6 times 500, 3,000 millimeters squared. So th these six bars have a combined area of 3,000 millimeters squared. And then the depth uh, can be calculated by taking the full depth, the full height 600, minus the cover, 40 millimeters of cover, and then the 15 millimeters, that's the diameter of the tie, which is this. And then the 25 M bar, and then half of uh, the 50 clear distance between the bars. So the depth is uh, 495. So I've already started here um, calculating what the force in the steel is. Uh, Phi steel yield stress times area is the force in the steel. And we're assuming that the, the steel is yielded. We don't know for sure until we find out where the neutral axis is, but we're assuming it, uh, that, it, that it has yielded. So the force in the steel is going to be uh, 0 0.85 times the yield strength, 400 MPa, times the area of the steel, 3,000 millimeters squared. So the uh, force in the steel in Newton's is 0.85 times 400 times uh, 3,000. 1.02e to the 6. So the force in the steel is 1.02 times 10 to the 6 newtons. The, uh, the stress block, which really is a convenient way to represent what the true force or stress is in, the, in this in this section. Really the neutral axis is is down here somewhere. And uh, what's really happening is the stress across here is is really a, some kind of distribution like this. Uh, because the stress strain curve for, for this for the concrete is, is parabolic. Like if I looked at the uh, If I looked at uh, stress versus strain for concrete, the stress in the concrete versus the strain in the concrete, it has a an area when it's linear elastic, and then it starts going parabolic. So, if we were to look at the stresses in this section as a function of strain it really would kind of have this kind of a shape to it. But in design, it's uh, it, it would take too long to keep going back and forth and recomputing strains and corresponding stresses, so we use an equivalent uh, stress block approach. And uh, that's why it doesn't uh, coincide with the neutral axis and why it's rectangular as opposed to a kind of a parabolic distribution. But uh, f from our code, what we, what we say is that the, um, the stress across here is going to be um, alpha 1, a stress block factor, times the, the uh, phi factor for concrete, times the uh, F prime C of the concrete, which is uh, right here. This is F prime C value right here. So that's the, th that's the 30 MPa, corresponding 30 MPa right there. Now, the uh, the height of the stress block is called uh, A in our codes. So there's A right there. And then the, the, the distance to the neutral axis is, uh, is here.
neutral axis is uh, C. So if we want to find out the force in the concrete, which would be right through the centroid of of the stress distribution, the force in the concrete, we would say, uh, I'll write it out here, force in the concrete is alpha 1 phi c f prime c times a times the width of the section, 300 millimeters in our case. I'll just draw 300 millimeters. So force in the concrete, alpha 1, like we said in our last tutorial here, I wrote down some rules that's on alpha 1 will always be 0 0.8 or thereabouts that's close enough for F prime C 25 or 30 MPa and, and beta is 0.9. Beta 1 is 0.9. So alpha 1 is uh, 0.8. Five of the concrete is uh, 0.65. F prime C is 30. A is unknown, and that's 300. So we can solve for A because we know the force in the concrete has to equal the force in the steel. There's no axial, axial though we've solved the force in the steel. So we say 1.02 times 10 to the 6 force in the steel equals this, the force in the concrete. 0 0.8 times 0 0.65 times uh, 30 MPa. Right, times A times 300. So we can uh, rearrange, solve for A. 1.02 e to the 6 divided by point A equals 218 millimeters. So this A here, oh, this A is uh, 218 millimeters. And we could also solve for C, because uh, the C is a, a function of A. It's uh, 218 millimeters A divided by a beta 1. And like we said, beta 1 is always going to be 0.9 for, uh, for 25 or 30 MPa concrete. So this is going to be 218 divided by 0 0.9. Two hundred eighteen divided by point nine. That's two hundred forty two millimeters. So now that we have that we can calculate what the moment resistance of the section is. And all we do is we take the uh the force, either the force in the concrete or the steel, they're both the same, and then times this lever arm, this distance from here to here, which is really this distance from the centroid of steel to the top, minus A over 2, and this is A over 2 here. So moment resistance is equal to the force in the steel or concrete. It's 1.02 times 10 to 6 newtons. 1.02 times 10 to the 6 newtons times the depth minus A over 2, which equals 1.02 10 to the 6 times 495 is the depth, right? Minus A over 2, A is uh, 218, 218 millimeters over 2. This is millimeters 495. So that would be uh, 1.02 e to the 6 times 495 minus 218 over 2. And we divide that by 1,000 squared. 1,000 to get the kilonewtons and divide it by 1,000 again to get the kilonewton meters. So the uh, capacity, the moment resistance is 394 kilonewton meters.